Hi guys, welcome to Algorithms Made Easy. My name is Khushbu and in this video we are going to see the question shortest path in a grid with obstacle elimination. You are given an m cross n integer matrix which is named as grid where each cell is either 0 that means empty or 1 that means there is an obstacle. You can move up, down, left or right from and to an empty cell in one step. Return the minimum number of steps to walk from upper left corner which is 0, 0 to the lowest right corner which is m minus 1, n minus 1 given that you can eliminate at most k obstacles. If it is not possible to find such a walk then you can return minus 1. In the first example we can reach the bottom right corner in 6 steps after eliminating one obstacle and in example 2, we cannot reach the bottom right corner as we need to eliminate at least two obstacles to reach the destination, which is not possible because the k given to us is 1. And so, we output minus 1 in this particular case. Now, let's see the first example in detail and also see how we can solve this question. So, here's the representation of the first example that was given to us wherein we have the obstacles which I have marked with this blocks and this are the empty cells. Now the k given to us is 1 that means we can eliminate any one of the obstacle in order to reach the bottom. So now amongst the different paths that we can take here are three paths. From this one we can reach the bottom right corner wherein we do not have to eliminate any obstacle. Over here we can eliminate this one or remove this one and reach the bottom right corner and in this particular case we can reach the bottom right corner by removing this obstacle. In these the first one takes 10 steps while these takes 6 steps and 6 is the minimum number of steps that we will need to take in order to reach the bottom right corner. So 6 is the answer in this particular case. Now. How do you solve this particular question? So over here we are given a few things that we need to take into consideration. The first is the condition of moving. So we are given directions and we also have obstacles. Directions up, down, left and right and obstacles that means we can remove at most k obstacles and still move in that direction. So we need to take this k into consideration and we need to take the directions into consideration. Now once we know the conditions we also need to think upon what is the approach that we are going to use along with these conditions. The thing that we are going to use here is BFS because we need to find the shortest route that too quickly. So this means that our solution is going to be the combination of BFS taking into consideration these two things in mind. Now one more thing that we are going to see in this question is optimizing the BFS in order to get around with time limit exceeded error. So let's start with our BFS. As we know we need a Q when we are working with BFS. So we'll start with our initial position which is 0, 0 and we'll see in what all directions we can go. That is we are going to find out the valid directions and we are going to keep adding these valid cells into our queue for further processing. Now the next question is what are we going to store in our queue? So we are going to store three things. First is the row and column of the grid cell and the second thing that we are going to store is the obstacle. Now you can either store the number of obstacles that you have crossed or the number of obstacles that are there with you that you can cross. So over here for this video I will be using the balance of the obstacle that is the number of obstacles I can still cross. So in our example initially the k given to us was 1 and so we are taking 1 in here. So it is an array of three things row, column and the obstacle balance. Initially we add 0, 0 and 1 which is our base case into the queue and then we'll start processing this. So we'll pull this out and we'll find all the valid directions from the current point which are these two. Why 
we are not going to take these two because these are outside the grid and are not valid. Now, this becomes our Q after adding the directions in which we can move from our initial position. Over here, you can see that this zero is the obstacle balance for this particular position because we have used our K to cross this particular obstacle. With this, we can say that we have taken one step in these directions. Now, since the Q is not empty, we'll go again and pop one of the elements out. This is the position 0, 1. From here, we can go into three different directions. Why we can go over here? Because we still have k equal to 1 left with us for this particular combination. Now, adding these into the q again. Now, if you would see, this position is equivalent to our starting position or the initial position. And with this, we are actually adding redundant coordinates which we'll have to process and that will increase the time that we are going to take in order to process all the cells and get the output. So over here we can come up with memoization that is storing the visited cells or visited combinations. Now what all things can we store? We can store the combination of these into a visited array and see that if this combination is already calculated we do not need to calculate it further but we can skip it so we'll add ijk into the visited array so that would be a three-dimensional array which would be of dimension m cross n cross k or we can take k plus one now that's how we are going to store it so we are going to store the trio of i j and k as visited or unvisited if we do it over here, at this particular moment, we'll have all these elements in our visited array marked as true that we have seen these elements. This was the initial node. This was the step one. And while processing this particular element, we also visited these two. So we are going to add these into our visited array as well. And we are not going to visit 001 because we already had it in our visited array. So this is the current state if we are taking memoization into consideration. Now let's move ahead and we'll take this element out of the queue and process its neighbors. While going through its neighbors, we'll see 000 and 200 are still unvisited. Now we will say that this particular cell was already visited but it was visited while k was 1. Over here if you see the k has become 0 and we can still visit this and find another root wherein k is 0 from this particular cell. So we will add it separately and that is the reason why we are storing the trio of these three because this is going to make it more efficient in memoization. So let's add these two in the queue as well as in the visited array. Now we have come to the end of step one and we'll now start processing our second step. So we increase the number of steps and mark the end of this particular step as the last element. Again taking one of the elements out and processing all its neighbors, we see that this one is already visited these are unreachable and this is a valid grid cell. So we add it in the queue as well as in the visited array and move ahead. Repeating this for another element which is 110 and over here we can go in three valid directions and so we add all those three into both our queue and in the array. Moving ahead over here we can see that these are invalid positions and these are already visited. If you see 0, 1, 0, which is already there and 1, 0, 0, which is also already there. Again, moving ahead, we have already visited this particular position and these are unreachable. Why is this unreachable now? Because the k has become minus 1 because the k is 0 
and if we are trying to go over here k will become minus 1 which is not possible and so this is unreachable. Next we again increase the steps and take the next iteration into consideration. Now we repeat this and for this particular grid we can only move in downward direction and we add it in the queue as well as in the visited array and move ahead. Again we increase the steps and process the next iteration. Finally, we have reached a cell from where we are going to reach our destination. So we process this, increase our steps and we take the neighbor, add it in the queue and also in the visited array. Now while we are processing this particular position, we find it to be the destination position that we were going to reach. And so we do not need to process any further but we can simply return the number of steps that we have taken till here which is equivalent to 6 and that is our answer. So this is how we are going to solve this particular problem with memoization by taking the trio into the array. So let's go ahead and code this out. Initially let's take a few variables. So these are the four things that we are going to need. First is M and N. Second is the direction array. So this will help us going into all the four directions. Third is the visited array which is of M cross N cross K plus 1. And fourth is our Q that we are going to use in our BFS. As an initial step we are going to add the initial starting position into our Q. So we do Q dot offer new int 0 0 and k. Now we are going to start with our iteration and before that let's return minus 1 if we are not going to get anything out of the queue. We'll keep processing while the queue is not empty and over here we are going to take a variable size which is going to be q dot size. So this is the basic thing that we always do in BFS and also while we are coming out of this queue we are going to increase the number of steps. So for that let's also initialize steps as 0. Now over here we will iterate while size is greater than 0 and we will also decrement the size at the end of the loop in which we are going to take the current element that will be q dot pole. And this will give me the current cell with the k value. The first thing that we are going to check over here is whether if current is the destination return the steps. So let's see if current of 0 is equal to m minus 1 and current of 1 is equal to n minus 1 return steps. Otherwise we are going to go in each and every direction. So go in all the valid directions. So now for this we are going to use the direction array. So over here let's find our values i becomes current of 0 plus d of 0, j becomes this and int obstacles becomes current of 2. So this is the next position that we are going to calculate. Once we have all this with us, we are going to traverse through valid cells. So for that, we are going to write the condition. So this is the validity for grid. After this, we also need to check the validity for the number of obstacles we have and if the cell is empty or not. So let's see if the cell is empty. So over here what we are going to do is we are going to check whether it is empty and whether 
it is still unvisited. In that case, we are going to add it in the queue and mark it visited. So we'll offer new int and we'll mark it visited. Now there is a condition that the grid is one and we can cross that obstacle. In that case also we'll add it in the queue. So let's take that condition. So we take whether the grid is one and we still have obstacle balance left with us and that particular position is not visited then we'll add it in the queue and also mark it visited. So this will take care of iterating over the cell and this will take care of incrementing the steps. So now if the steps are not returned over here then there is no way possible we can reach the destination and so in that case this particular statement will return minus 1 as expected. Let's run this code and it gives a perfect result. Let's submit this and it got submitted. The time and space complexity for this particular solution would be O of m into n into k. That's it for this question guys. I hope you liked it and I'll see you in another one. So till then, keep learning, keep coding.